Okay, boys and girls, so what I'm going to show you now is how to use watercolors to go over your resist drawing. So wherever I have drawn with the crayons, the watercolor cannot go. That's what resist means. All right, so I got one. Well, let me tell you about the materials that I have. First, I have my drawing, of course. <clears throat> I have my watercolors here. I have my watercolor brush, and I have my uh, water water uh, bin with my sponge. So the water bin is going to be used to rinse and wipe, rinse and wipe the sponge for wiping the water for rinsing. Before I do anything though, I've got to wake my colors up. Okay, so what I'm going to do to wake my colors up is I'm just going to get my brush and I'm going to put it in the water and I'm just going to go into each color. I'm not going to touch black though, because we're not going to use black, we want to use bright colors. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of water and the water helps the watercolor wake up. Gets it ready to paint is another way of saying it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, we're working with pattern here today, is I'm going to um, complete the pattern. I'm going to start with the shirt. So his shirt is has red stripes and I'm going to use a, what we call an analogous color that is colors that are next to each other on the color wheel analogous is another way of saying that the colors are alike so um, one of the colors that I, is a, is like red is yellow it's next to we it's next to red on the color wheel so I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to go into the yellow and I'm just going to paint right over and you can see that where I'm painting with over the red, the yellow can't soak in. In fact, I can take my finger and I can wipe it right off. And I'm just painting really slowly, really carefully. And I'm over here. And I can go right over that red. I don't even have to worry about being that neat with this. Of course, I don't want to go out of my lines of the shirt. I only want the shirt to have the yellow. Okay, so I'm going to rinse and I'm going to wipe and that sponge just soaks the water right out of my brush. By the way, you can take your brush like this and you can make it into a nice neat point as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pants. So I think I'm going to use a darker color for the pants. I've got gray stripes. I think what I'm going to use uh, is blue. So I've already got my blue ready to go. I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush here. And I'm going to take blue. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm taking my brush and dragging it along the edge of my watercolor palette. That gets the extra water and extra watercolor out of my brush. And you can see right here, the blue paint does not want to soak in where I've colored with the gray marker. That's the resist. That makes it really easy to brush colors over and just do my painting really quickly. A little bit of blue might get into the cracks in between the gray where I didn't color in so well, but that's actually something that's kind of good that I want. And I'll give my, give my uh, scarecrow's color a little bit of character. So rinse and wipe. If a little bit of color gets on the sponge, that's okay. We want it to, we want our brush to be clean, so. All right, and I'm just gonna take my brush and reshape it with my fingers like this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the background. So, um, the background sky, I'm gonna make a light wash of blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of blue from, and I'm gonna put it in my mixing tray. The top of my lid of my watercolor acts as a mixing tray. And then to make a wash, that means a color mixed with lots of water so that I can just wash the paper down. And I'm going to be very careful to not cover up my sun because I want to do that a bright color, maybe orange or yellow, something like that. And I want my sky, it's we're going to say it's daytime here, so I want my sky to be a nice light blue. I don't want it to be a dark blue. 
be careful of the edges because if you still have wet color, you can see right here a little bit of the yellow is mixing in with my blue and it's going to start to turn it green because yellow and blue together make green. A little bit of it mixing is okay. Hey, we're artists. We're just we're we're just learning to be artists. We're not experts yet, so it's okay if we if we mix a little bit. And hey, it's a painting. So if the paint mixes a little bit, no big deal. But we do want to take our time and try to be as neat as we can. Notice how I'm painting. I'm painting very slowly. Uh, sort of like we learned with the markers. I paint mostly in one direction. And one of the things that you need to be careful about is to not make your paint your paper too wet. If you get too much water in your paper, you will paint a hole straight through your paper and you don't want that, boys and girls. You do not want that. Now, I didn't do this on my painting, but a little trick that you could do, maybe for the next painting, is I could have taken a white crayon and drawn some little clouds back there and they would have shown up, even though when I was drawing with the white crayon, they wouldn't have shown up. All right, but painting with it, a white crayon, and painting watercolor over it, it would show up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix a custom color here. So I've got this blue left here in my mixing tray, and I'm gonna take a little bit of green. I wanna make sort of like a blue-green for the fields. So I'm gonna leave that little bit of blue, and then I'm gonna add some green to it, and lots of water so I make a nice green wash and I'm just going to lay that down now we've got some really beautiful blue green color here in the background that we can use and I'm just going nice and slow washing it down being very careful a little bit of my green moved over into my blue but you know what it's only a little bit so it's not that big of a deal it's not that big of a deal and when my painting dries I can always go back over areas and repaint them boys and girls it's really important when you're painting that you're very careful to make sure that you clean your brush after you switch colors and that you try to never mix these colors together. Please don't ever take your brush and just go into each and every color and mix them all around because you know what? You ruin the, you ruin the colors when you do that and then uh, you waste it and then we don't have colors to mix with. All right, I'm gonna use a really bright green straight from my palette for the bottom here. And I'm just gonna do a bright, bright green now after this painting dries, we're gonna be able to go over it and add some details. So after the painting dries, I'm gonna be able to add more layers of watercolor detail on top of what I've already painted. So I just this is just the first layer of paint. Artists paint in layers, which means stacking colors on top of each other. And the more they layer, the more detail they can add and the more color and the more differences in color, which is what makes color more interesting when you have colors that are alike, but they're just a little bit different next to each other. All right, now I gotta do the sun. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a custom color for the sun. I'm gonna take yellow. Now yellow is the color that gets dirtiest the easiest. So you wanna make sure you wash your brush really well every time that you get to go in and use yellow because yellow gets dirty super easy. All right, so I've got this really beautiful orange wash and I'm just gonna paint in my sun with this yellowy orange. All right, and that's it boys and girls. We'll add more layers later.